this will be one of my most important video made on this channel because no one knows this. No one knows this and yet it is available. Let your body do the job. Now we're talking about attracting females over here. You are getting in the way of your body because your body is the most advanced technology this world knows. It is basically your biological wingman. If you were to stop getting in the way, consuming toxic substances, your body would produce pheromones. Now pheromones, there's two major different types of pheromones. You've got your estrotetranol, which is basically the female pheromone. And you've got your androsterone, which is basically the masculine, the male pheromone. Now, I assume you're male, so I'm only going to talk about androsterone. Now, androsterone is a pheromone that is found in males. And it has been shown to change the way females see you. Now, in this study, it talks about past studies finding that androsterone, when a female smells it, can affect their mood, making them more positive, so making them happier by being around you. And I don't think you can understand how powerful this is. This means if we were able to synthesize androsterone in a good manner and put it on our body, females would be happier around you. And if they're happier around you, they're going to associate you with happiness, which is an awesome thing, right? But more on that later. It also increases arousal. So sexual energy towards you increases their heart rate and cortisol levels. It has been shown that when females smell androsterone, kind of gives, gives them a sense of peace. And all of those emotions, everything I talked about, is incredibly important when it comes to attraction. And androsterone pheromones is basically your body telling the world it is ready to reproduce and that you should reproduce with me, basically. So where can you find androsterone? Now, androsterone is found in human sweat, urine, and other things, but androsterone, in my opinion, is much more potent in alpha males because in alpha male rats, there has been shown to be much more androsterone than in beta male rats where they barely have any androsterone. And this is going to be a black pill to some of you, but after female rats have been exposed to the smell of an alpha male rat who has androsterone, well, that female rat didn't want to have sex with any beta male rats after having smelled the alpha male sweat. This means that you don't want to be the beta male with no androsterone. You want to be the alpha male with the most amount of androsterone. Androsterone is an androgen, just like testosterone, just like DHT. And to increase the amount of androsterone, you basically want to increase your androgens. So anything that's going to be good for your hormonal health is also going to be good for your increase in pheromones. That's why I've listed over here how to increase androsterone. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is exercise. Now, when you're doing exercise, you don't want to simply do a little, go on a little run or do your little body weight protocol. The best type of exercise to increase androsterone is heavy weight lifting. Now, this does not mean you should become a power lifter. Instead, what you should do is from time to time, try to go for around six reps on your lifts, pushing to failure. You got to push hard in your gym sessions. Now, not only will that increase androsterone, it will also increase your sensitivity to androgens, which will make you more masculine by turning on masculine gene expression. Now, the second one, in my opinion, the most important one after exercise is diet. Now diet, you want to be eating right. You want to be eating things that will increase your androgens and the building block to all androgens. So testosterone, DHT is cholesterol. So you want a diet high in cholesterol. Now cholesterol has a bad rep. Basically the sugar industry trying to sell you a bunch of actual bullshit has told you that cholesterol is bad for you. 
it is quite the opposite. Cholesterol in the blood is different than the cholesterol you ingest. When you ingest more cholesterol, it does not mean you have more cholesterol in the blood. Now, I know this can sound crazy saying this, but there's research proving that when increasing cholesterol intake in your diet, it did not increase cholesterol levels in your blood. Now, this means that cholesterol in your blood is a whole different topic than the cholesterol you ingest. Cholesterol in your blood is affected by sugar, by being metabolically unhealthy. So remove that idea that cholesterol is bad and instead embrace high cholesterol diet by eating more meat, more fatty meat, by adding butter and oil on your meat. And also you can eat different types of nuts. What you want is basically a high fat diet with sufficient proteins and as low carbs as you can get it to. Now carbs honestly can be amazing for your exercise. Try to see where you can sacrifice carbs, but if you don't wanna make that sacrifice of not eating carbs at all, I totally understand, I wouldn't do that. Basically what I believe to be the best diet is a caveman diet. And a caveman diet is basically meat, fruits, vegetables, some nuts, and that's basically it. Now the third thing you can do to increase androsterone is basically avoiding estrogenics. Now estrogenics are basically artificial estrogen. And artificial estrogen, if increased, it will lower androgens. So you will have lower testosterone, lower androsterone, lower DHT, and you don't want that. Now estrogenics can come in a bunch of different forms. You got your phytoestrogens, which are basically plants that you want to avoid. Now, the most important plant you want to avoid is soy. I know you're eating a bunch of soy. Everything that has soy in it, try to avoid putting that in your mouth. Now, the other two ones are cannabis and lavender. Now, cannabis, I mean, don't, don't go smoking cannabis. That's obvious, right? Lavender is quite more tricky. Sometimes when you like the smell of lavender, maybe you put some lavender scent on your bed or stuff like that. Don't do that. That's estrogenic and it's going to kill your testosterone and your androsterone. Now there's other estrogenics like plastic, BPA, BPS, phthalates. Avoid those. Avoid everything that is plastic. Now sometimes you've got to make a trade. Let's say you're, you're extremely thirsty and you only got a water bottle in plastic. Like it's fine. Don't, don't think about it. But try to go for a glass water bottle, right? There's other estrogenics like your fragrance. There's a bunch of estrogenic in it. All the hygiene products, skincare products, usually there's parabens, you wanna avoid those. And the fourth, which I believe to be one of the most fun way to increase testosterone and androsterone is sexual abstinence. Now, sexual abstinence is basically semen retention, right? And semen retention for only the span of one week has shown to increase testosterone by 145%. That was in a Chinese study, but what I believe, and this is anecdotal, it's from my personal experience and listening to different personal experience of different people, right? Sexual absence, semen retention, seems to increase androgen sensitivity, testosterone, DHT, and androsterone. Everything that's gonna increase testosterone is gonna increase androsterone. So far, we only have studies that cover basically a week of semen retention. And after one week, there's not that many studies. And if there are, it's kind of blurry, right? So in my opinion, if you go three weeks without ejaculating, you're going to be increasing androsterone. Now, during sexual intercourse, whether you're doing that virtually by watching adult content and fapping, or you're actually doing it with your lover, with a random girl, I don't care what you do. You're gonna be increasing your testosterone during that moment, but it's simply gonna peak. After that, it's gonna come down. It's not gonna go lower, it's not gonna go higher, it's just gonna come back to normal. But prolactin, the act of ejaculating, increases prolactin levels by 400%. That's why usually when you, you fap or you fuck and you ejaculate, you don't want to go again, right? Like so you've got a little period of time where you're kind of 
sexually disable, right? Well, during that period of time, it is said to lower androgen sensitivity. And in my opinion, if you do that every single day, you will see a steady decrease in testosterone and androsterone. And you don't want that. So that's basically the four ways, the four most potent ways to increase androsterone. And bro, you're probably only doing the first one of them. The second of them, you're like, ah, uh, probably coping. The third, the third one, you probably just heard of it, estrogenics. You should be scared of them. And the fourth one, you already know of it. No, not November. It's basically that, but do it all year round. Now, if you want, it is said that after like 90 days of semen retention, sometimes you can see a drop in hormonal health. Basically, your body is not your wingman anymore. It's thinking to itself, okay, I'm never going to fuck, so might as well like stop producing hormones. That's just speculation. There's, there's no science behind what I just, just said, but everything else is facts. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.